Hello and welcome to the presentation of uh, real-time global illumination in this Artist 3.9. So in this uh, 3.9, we've got a new feature. Um, as the title says of the demo, it's global illumination. So uh, we can do global illumination in real time with a uh, new invention that we have, which I want to show uh, first off with a simple example of a Cornell box. I think every 3D designer knows the Cornell box and knows uh, the functionality of the Cornell box. So here it's all about in this little model to show we have a, a uh, red wall, we have a green wall, and we have a blue floor. So if light shoots through the roof, uh, through these holes, uh, it needs to bounce the light onto the walls and onto the floor, and the light bounces into this uh, room around. And uh, through the bounces, it needs to spread and bleed the colors uh, accordingly uh, to the correct objects and faces. So when I go in here and uh, choose one of my uh, surfaces and uh, start changing the color, we see immediately that the side of our cube is getting either blue, red, green, but not faked with the texture. This is done via the radiosity setting uh, of the light. So if I would go to my light menu, I have my spotlight, which is uh, casting also a shadow. But by the way, if I move that, we see the moving shadows. And also the shadows are affecting uh, the radiosity, as we see, and also the global illumination inside the system. So for this slide, I have a radiosity setting, and if I in increase the radiosity setting or decrease, we see we get, we get either more or less bleed from the colors uh, back into the environment. If I start the animation with this uh, little logo that we're having, so it's the VSRT logo, we see the shadows are cast incorrect, and even these shadows are casted in real time, as we see, onto the wall, onto the floor, or onto the other objects. So whenever I bring in now a new color, and introduce that color, it starts to uh, modify the whole scenery. So if I come in and uh, create an orange cube instead of, we see immediately this cube needs to emit the light orange uh, onto the roof. So this is, uh, in general, the functionality of the uh, global illumination. So uh, I have a, uh, a little more advanced example where we use this global Ill illumination inside a virtual studio. In the old days, we needed to bake virtual studios with um, standard render engines, post-render engines from the market. Uh, there is tons of render engines around, but the problem is it's post-processing. So it is not dynamic. You need to bake the shadows. You need to bake the lights. Uh, and therefore, you get static results. You get very beautiful results, with, depending on the render engine you take, but you get always static results. So, the example which I'm showing here for this virtual studio, if I start to rotate, we see immediately the lights are reflected on the floor. The lights are changing depending where I am inside the studio. And this is all done dynamically. But the light is also uh, reflected and represented properly on the surfaces because what we are using here in combination is substance. So uh, the company Algorithmic uh, created the substance shaders, which are state-of-the-art and standard tools for the game industry and also for the broadcast industry. So these are PBR materials. PBR means physical-based rendering materials. So they are physically based correct. This is why we get this realistic uh, look. But they are not only physical-based, uh, these materials, they are also procedural materials. So meaning this allows me uh, to create uh, changes at any time. So if I uh, click on my surface, on my uh, wooden floor surface, I see I have a few different settings for the ambient intensity. I have my uh, shader in here. I can change uh, the tiling. All that goes dynamically with uh, con in taking in consideration uh, the lighting. But if I want to do a little bit more on this one, I go to adjust the properties. And this opens now the uh, algorithmic substance uh, window, which allows me to change uh, the output size from 1K to a 2K map, so I have more sharpness or uh, less sharpness, depending on uh, uh, what you want to do with these uh, textures. And I can uh, change a couple of other things, like the normal intensity uh, um, or uh, the roughness value. So in that case, I want to change the roughness value, and I want to have a stronger light reflection on this one. So by taking away or, or decreasing the roughness value, we see the light is uh, getting represented in much a more rough way. Uh, I can do uh, the same on the walls over here. So we see the light is uh, represented correctly on this wall. 
and uh, depending where the camera moves, we get the light reflection. Um, my personal taste would say, now, okay, let's go in and uh, play a little bit with the structure that we're having here. So again, this is a procedural shader uh, using the global illumination system to create this uh, realistic effect. If I go into this one and uh, check the properties, these are the properties for my wood. And we see this wood wall has total different properties uh, than the wood uh, floor. So here, again, I can uh, decrease uh, the, the rough, roughness of my wood if I want to have a strong reflection or if I want to have only a very, very soft reflection of my light represented. I can change the amount of fibers, the amount of knots. All this is done uh, via procedurals and uh, increasing the normal intensity. So I have a uh, stronger bump now on this wall. So let's go back and uh, play a little bit with the radiosity inside this setup. Uh, I want to concentrate uh, to this wall over here, this wooden wall, and uh, show you the light conditions. So inside this scene I have a couple of lights in usage, and there is one uh, spotlight which uh, hits uh, that right wall. So let me turn off uh, a couple of other lights and we see immediately uh, the studio uh, needs to get darker. And uh, this one spotlight can relight the rest of the scene and as we see, it's uh, lighting it uh, dynamically, but I also can increase the radiosity. So if a light shoots on a brown wall and I have a high radiosity setting, it needs to bounce the photons uh, from this light back throughout the whole set. And by increasing the radiosity, it starts to bleed this color completely into the rest of my studio. So uh, this is a very nice and neat way um, to show uh, how the radiosity is working. Uh, a little bit more, uh, if I shoot now on the roof, we see there is no orange. I'm not bleeding any colors. But there's an orange light bar on the roof and this uh, circle. So if I hit that one exactly, it starts to bleed again back into my scene. Uh, depending where I am, I get correct reflections and the representation of the light throughout my scene. What I want to do next is again shoot uh, to this wall and uh, turn on a few more lights and uh, give you the idea what I also can do uh, let me make this a little bit darker and a little bit less intensity uh, from the fill light. On the beginning, we see how it's getting represented over here. If I make it strong or less strong. I want to change now the material of uh, this wall. So just that you get an idea how long it would take you with a post-render engine compared to our real-time engine with the uh, global illumination system. So on this wall, I'm using a wooden... Um, uh, texture again, and I just want to change this one to uh, ceramic tiles. So I just go to my Substance database. We have uh, the databases imported. So when importing 3D objects from any standard application, meaning uh, Autodesk Maya, Autodesk 3D Max, or uh, Max on Cinema, uh, you can use Houdini. We're supporting all these formats. If you have applied a Substance on this one, it will look exactly the same in our render engine because Substance is PBR materials, which means physical-based rendering materials. They always look exactly the same and behave correct in light. So I'm going to the uh, latest database uh, from the Substance source, with, which was released uh, uh, about a month ago. And uh, I'm going to find some uh, different materials. Instead of wood, I go to some uh, tiles and uh, use these uh, ceramic tiles. And I go to my settings and just adjust with the procedurals what I really want from uh, this material. So first of all, I want to have a high resolution. I want to have a 2K map on this one. Then I have a couple of uh, tiles in here, but I want to change the parameters of these tiles. So uh, let's go in again and uh, say we want to have more. I'll just scroll down. And there is a number of tiles. So I either decrease the number of tiles or I increase. So I have more tiles. The tiles color uh, can be specified here. And I also can have a color variance. So we have some darker, some lighter tiles in here. If I uh, go down, I have uh, less color variance. If I have uh, that up, I have a very high color variance in. I can put in a dirt on this one. So the dirt is applied, again, via procedural. So everything is dynamically adjustable in real time for the artist. So if I want to change the color over here, let's uh, do some uh, kind of crazy color. And we have these tiles here. We concentrate on them. We see we get uh, the light cor correctly uh, represented and everything. So uh, if we want to have a look on the uh, radiosity, we see now the radiosity of uh, this object 
if I increase that one, it's bleeding now this purple color back in, into my studio. All done in real time without any post-processing or rendering. So this is what the uh, glo global illumination system in combination with the uh, substance shaders can do for you. If you're interested to uh, know more in detail, you're very welcome to visit one of our professional artists on the booth, and they are happy to show you everything about the features.